<laughs> yeah, give him another hand. Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say peace to everybody that's on the internet, watching in, tuning in, and everybody that's watching or listening on the, on the line. I talked to a uh, sister this morning. It just show you that people all over would like to be able to uh, have a holy convocation like we're able to have right now. And, well, we know Sister Salisa, she moved all the way from Jackson, Mississippi, so she can do it. But I talked to a sister, I talked to a sister this morning by the name of Kimberly, lives in, in Cleveland. And she was just inquiring about the time, and she said, well, I got to go. I got to go so I can listen to the true church. I'm going to the library. She said, how long is the service? I said, well, the service is about, it's at least two hours long. She said, well, they only give me an hour at the library on the computer, but I'm going anyway. Amen. So that, that just goes to show you that people all over are hungry for the word and wish they can have a situation like we got here. Early in the week, I heard from another brother. This brother, he been on our prison list for a while. He, he got out of prison. He one of the ones that didn't get out of prison and forget about you. You know, that happened, that happened sometime, but he said, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to make it over there. He in prison in some other state. But he got out, and he is still trying to deal with the word, which is a blessing. He said he's going to make it over here. So when he come, I'm going to introduce him if the Lord allow him to make it this way. But now we're going to get into today's lesson. And you hear so much out in the world, especially with this modern technology, Anybody that got a telephone, they can put a message on TV, on YouTube, because this, this technology is just going wild. But you, with that, that's good so you can get the truth out. But on the other hand, it's bad because you got people spewing a lot of foolishness. And some of the foolishness being spewed, even by brothers that call themselves Israel, because we know we Israel. I mean, we, we can teach out the Bible. We had a lesson recently to show that Israel is a black people cursed by God. So we can prove that. But that's not the bottom line. That's not that's everything that it's about. No, it's a lot more to it than that. And surely it's not the case that God is only going to save Israel. And you do have brothers that teach that. They know they're Israel. They say that God is only going to save Israel, and that's just not accurate. We know that God is the God of all nations. He created all nations, and he's going to save people from all nationalities. So, but people that went, they didn't went, they didn't went too far to the right. They didn't went extreme. And it's all over the Bible that God is about saving people from all nationalities, even though Israel is important. You can't go to the other extreme either, to the left, which some people do and make like Israel don't matter. No, you didn't went too far to the left. Israel matter. Israel is of utmost importance. But now you can't go too far to the right and say God is only going to save Israel. You got to, like the Bible says, you got to have a balance. You got to have a just way to just balance. You got to deal, rightly divide the word of God. So we're going to get into this today. And the title is the gospel for all nations. And that's period. It's for all nations. And it's always been for all nations. God just started with Israel. That's all he did. We're going to start off in Matthew, the 28th chapter. Matthew, the 28th chapter. And this is when Jesus, the Messiah himself, had rose from the dead. And he gave his disciples some further directives on what to do. 28 and verse 18. Go ahead. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Mm -hmm. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now how in the world are you going to have Israelites teaching that God is only going to save Israel? You know, he gonna, that's, that's old Muslim doctrine. An old school Israelite doctrine. 
about the white man being the devil. Look, I'm going to tell you, it's more, it's Israel starred the devils. <laughs> I know, I used to be a big devil, personally. I know. So we got a lot of nerve calling somebody else the, the devil. The Bible say Israel have taught the wicked ones their ways, the evil ones their way. He said, you didn't taught them. Even if it's just by default. We responsible because we should have been the ones to teach them the right way. Because God made Israel a nation of priests. So we should have been the ones to tell them the right way to go. And just by us not doing our duty, we allowed them to mess up. So now you gotta you gotta cut the cell phones off. Go to uh but not I mean this is clear after Jesus came out the grave because again, he do start with Israel. So he had to make it clear later on and had to emphasize some stuff to the disciples that it's for all people because he do start with Israel. That's just the order of things. So notice at verse 19, after he came out of the grave, he said, all power was given unto me. Then he said, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Now that sounds pretty clear, don't it? Not just, it, he didn't just say go teach Israel. He didn't even just say go teach Israel among all nations, did he? Because Israel was scattered out, but yet he wanted to teach all nations, period. He said, go ye therefore. And notice he said teach, and he didn't say just jump and shout and scream and sing to them. See, we had a choir that sang a little bit. That's good. That's a good start. But it's much more than you just, you got to sing praises with understanding. The Bible said with all your getting, get what? Understand it. So that's what you got to do. So that's why I noticed this is Jesus now. Read that again, because y'all don't hear me. 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. See, he said, teach them, right? Teach all nations. Then what? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And we, and we know that name that covered those three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, is none other than Jesus. But go ahead, verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded. And you got something to observe. People say, you ain't got to do nothing Jesus did all. You lying on Jesus right here. You got something to observe. Ain't that what he said? Mm -hmm. Teaching them to observe, to do some stuff. We want to talk about the Lord, but we don't want to do nothing. We want to act like we love the Lord, but we don't want to do nothing. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The Bible said, don't just be a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. So Jesus rightfully said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So now you just got to figure out what he commanded. And it's all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelation what he wants you to do. He didn't do away with his commandments like people think. Go ahead. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And this is good down to the end, isn't it? All the way down to the end. He said, and lo, I am with you to the end of the world. And we know we are close to the end of the world. We know we are real close to the end of the world, but it's not here yet, is it? And people need to be taught all over the world before the end get here. See, that's the mercy of God. See, God, if it was me, I probably would have destroyed everybody by now because man is wicked. But see, God is merciful. He give people a chance to repent. He give them a chance. He even know the majority won't repent, but he still give you a chance. So you can't say you didn't have a chance. Now go to Matthew uh, 24. Back up a few chapters. Because he said, I'm with you to the end of the world. And the disciples knew. See, this is the biggest thing in the Bible, the end of the world. The disciples knew the world had to end as we know it. Not that he going to destroy everything and everybody going to be up in heaven. No, he's going to end this system of doing things and it's going to be righteousness in the world when he get done with it. That's what the end of the world signifies. It's going to end as we know it. It ain't going to be all this foolishness like it is now. Going against what God say. Matthew 24 and verse 3. Because they asked him about the end of the world. Go ahead. Matthew 24. What verse is that? Verse 1 or you want to start at verse 3. Uh, verse 3. I should have just. We're going to get right to the chase. Verse 3. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, uh -huh. Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? See what he said? They asked him a point blank question. Well, they asked multiple questions, but the bottom line was to them the end of the world, right? 
He said, as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, because he had been saying some stuff openly, so they wanted to get some clarification. So they came unto him privately, saying, tell us when shall these things be? Now, these things referred to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, which took place in 70 AD, some 40 years after Jesus was talking right here. That did take place. But now they asked him more than just these things. He, they also asked, which you cannot ignore. And what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world? See, the world got the end. They understood it. And Jesus proceeded to give them signs. But the big thing we're concerned with is that the world is messed up. He gave them the wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquake. We just had a devastating earthquake and tsunami in Japan, right? We just saw that. That ain't, that's nothing but a sign of the times. But we're not dealing with that today. We just want to show you in the midst of all the physical trouble, he gave you some spiritual signs. And what is that? Skip down to verse 11, because he had to address the question of the sign of his coming and the end of the world. He wasn't talking about no end of no age back in 70 AD. No, he's talking about the end of the world, just like he said in Matthew 28. He said he is with you to the end of the world. Go ahead, verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. See, that's a big sign, brothers and sisters. And most people have not heeded this sign. I, a matter of fact, I would say this. Wherever you're at, if you listen to this lesson, if you don't learn nothing from today, know that Jesus said this. And how many false prophets? Many false prophets shall arise. See, we haven't taken heed of that because we go to the average church on the average Sunday and listen to whatever the people say, the man say. We don't even discern. People talking about, well, you know, I got the gift of discerning spirit where you need to use it better. <laughs> you ain't discerned too good. You listen to a false prophet and you acting like one. You need to discern better. Look, we haven't even paid attention to this fact. We assume the man got to be, must be a, a righteous man from God. And we don't pay attention to really what he's saying. Sometimes we just have a, we just try to keep ourselves woke because we know he ain't saying nothing. That'd be the hardest thing, trying to stay woke. But now, this is a clear-cut warning. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive. How many? Many. Many. That's a whole lot, isn't it? That's why churches are full of people, but they deceive. They don't know nothing about the Lord. But go ahead, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Uh-huh. But he that... In but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Oh, now the world is, is in bad shape. Iniquity abounds. Sin run rapid. Sin is in every corner of the world overrunning. You talking about your cup running over? Well, the world's cup is running over with sin. And that's why it's, it's no love left in the world. And then he said, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So the... Main, our main job is, in spite of all the famines, pestilence, earthquakes, is enduring being obedient to God. You're going to go through some hardships, but you got to endure being obedient to God. Because all this going to end, the world going to end. So you shouldn't be worried about your little day-to-day -day thing so much. This is all going to come to end. So our main job is enduring. He that noticed, he didn't say you get saved one Sunday afternoon, did he? He said, you have to endure to get saved. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Whether that be the end of your life, which could come before the end of the world, or we in the days when we can live to the world end. But go ahead, 14. What else going to happen before the end come? Go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Ah, oh, and this gospel of the kingdom... Got to be preached as well. So that's why, but notice, if there's many false prophets out here deceiving many, the people that's preaching the gospel got to be few in number, right? right. Didn't Jesus say the road to life was straight and narrow, few be defined? Right. So the ones preaching the true gospel got to be few in number if there's many false prophets, and they've already deceived many, right? right. Yes. Right. Okay, but still, that's how awesome God is. In the midst of all the lies and deceit and deception that's going on, which we've been having for thousands of years. In the midst of all that, God going to have some crazy looking people that ain't going to have no big gowns on worried about how they look and a big cross on their chest. He's going to have them preaching the gospel. 
But they ain't going to be but a minority. They're going to be minute in number. Because there's many false prophets and they have messed people up all over, deceived many. But this gospel of the king, notice, people don't even know what the gospel is. The gospel of the king is not the gospel you going to heaven like the false preachers and told you. The kingdom of heaven is going to be on the earth. Jesus told, it's so clear, Jesus told you to pray in the Lord's prayer and people pray it. And then turn around and say, I can't wait to get to heaven. <laughs> Look, you just pray, thy kingdom come. How you going? Thy will be done in earth as it is. And that's what you should be looking for. But we so messed up. We've been brainwashed. But he said many false prophets would rise. That's why he said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to who? All, all nations. nations. And then shall the end come. So all nations again got to hear it all over again. It's for all nations. And the few that believe from among all nations, God is going to save them. And it's going to be hell to pay for the rest. But now let's go further. We're going to come back to Matthew. Go to Psalm 147. Because that shows you right there at the beginning that the gospel is for everybody. All nations. Jesus said it twice. Go forth and preach out to all nations. It's not just for Israel. But now I got to throw in here that it do start with Israel. Israel is the one nation that everything do start with. And you need to understand that. You need to understand that for sure. Psalm 147. And Jesus is going to verify that he started with Israel. Even though the gospel was for all nations, he started with Israel. So that lets you know where you got to go drink your water from. It's going to come from Israel. That's where you got to lead the horse to the water. He got to come. Everybody, all nations going to have to get the word from Israel ultimately. If they're going to have it the right way. Right. Psalm 147 and verse 1. See, we, we miss that. We try to make it like God is just general now. Now, like I said at the beginning, you have went too far to the left. You're taking too much liberty. Yeah, the gospel is for all nations, but he do start with Israel. Psalm 147 and 1. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord, mm -hmm. for it is good to sing praises unto our God. Oh, definitely. It's good to sing praises to our God. But you got to read further. Psalm 47 says sing praises with understanding. Right. You can't just be singing about anything to God and, or doing anything and think your singing is acceptable. I can read you in the Bible and Amos, God said he don't want to hear your song. Right. Because if you're doing wickedness, all the singing your little heart can do ain't going to matter to God. It's not going to matter. But, but all things being equal, you, you believing and serving God, according to what he say, the best you can, it's good to sing praises to our God. For what? For it is pleasant. Uh-huh. And praise is coming. Praise is good. Go ahead, verse 2. But now, if you believe in praising God, which is good, you can't skip verse 2. Go ahead. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. Uh -huh. He gathereth together the outcast of Israel. See, to the average person, they don't know the importance of Israel. That verse don't mean nothing. They heard about praising the Lord. But see, it's bigger than praising the Lord. You got to know what the Lord is about right. as well. You got to know who you praising. Right. So now verse 2, right after talking about praising the Lord, you can't omit where he said, The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcast of Israel. The same one you praising, this is what he's about. Right. Israel is at the top of the list for him. That's the top nation for God. But he want to save people from all nations. Go ahead, verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart uh -huh. and bindeth up their wounds. Now, you can hear people saying, Oh, God, you know, you, you having a hard time, but God healeth the broken in heart. And he binded up all their wounds. You know, they got a lot of little cliches built off of scriptures like this. Oh, you know, the earth don't have no pains that heaven can't heal. You know, you got some of these nice sayings. Okay, that's good. But now you can't skip over verse 2. The same one that healed the broken and hearted and binded up the wounds, he the same one that deal with Israel, don't he? He build up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He do, all, he do it all. He the one to do this. Skip down to verse 16. Let's see what else this mighty God do. Go ahead. He give us snow like wool. Oh, we just seen a whole lot of snow around here. <laughs> they was talking about breaking records. We were snowed in. So we know this is the case around here, don't we? 
He giveth snow like wool. It was a whole lot of wool out there. I was so happy I got a chance to go to L.A. at the end of that week, boy. Go ahead. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. Go ahead. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Uh huh. Who can stand behind? I mean, who can stand before his cold? Yeah, even even all the tough gangsters go in the house, don't they, when they get cold? Yes, definitely. You don't even have all that killing going on. Lord know how to put you to bed. <laughs> all of them go. They, the corners be empty. You know why? Because who can stand before his cold? You find you some heat and get out the way, don't you? Go ahead, verse 18. He sendeth out his word and melteth them. See, this is how awesome God is. He sends snow and make it cold. Then all of a sudden, he says, it's time for some warm weather, which we're getting a little bit now. He sendeth out his word and melteth them. Go ahead. He causeth his wind to blow uh -huh. and the waters flow. See, the ice started melting. He caused the wind to blow and the waters to flow. But now this is God who do all this. But let's see what else he do. See, we can't take a little bit of the word that we just want to take. We have to deal with it all. So let, all we got to do, keep reading. We're going to see what else the mighty God do. What else he do? He sheweth his word unto Jacob. Oh, you mean this is what God do? The one that bring the snow and then melt it? The one that heal it up the broken and hearted? He showeth his word unto Jacob, and that's the end of the story. That's who he deal with. That's why the other nations, though he want to save people from all nations, they get it through Jacob. This the way. That's how this Bible is here. He only been dealing with Jacob from Genesis to Revelation. That's who he been dealing with. That's how I know when people start talking about Muhammad, I know he didn't raise up no prophets from no other nations to do nothing like that. He only deal with Israel. Uh -huh. Amos 2 tell you that he made of Israel's sons, uh -huh. prophets, and Nazareth. He only deal with Jacob. Right. So I know he didn't have to go find nobody in Arabia to give him nothing. He don't do that. The only way somebody in Arabia really get it is through Jacob. That's, right. That's the way they get it. Uh -huh. Even when the angel, even if the angel would have went to Muhammad, he would have said, look, you need to go over there and find one of them Israelites. And let him teach you the word. Because we're going to read that. That's what he did with our Cornelius in Acts the 10th chapter. But now, he said he showed, he sent his word. He showed his word unto Jacob and who else? His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. See, Israel and Jacob is one and the same. He just used them interchangeably because Jacob's name was changed to Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. But what about the other day? Have he dealt with any other nation? Like the Arabians or the Japanese or the Chinese or the Nigerians? Let's see. He has not dealt so with any nation. Oh, he ain't dealt with no other nation like this, have he? Oh, wow. He only deal with Jacob. Like this. He showed all of Jacob and then from Jacob. But that's how awesome God is. He ain't got to go around from nation to nation. Tell him, this is what I want. This is what I want. He started with one nation and let it spread from there. God is practical, isn't he? Just like he don't have to come to everybody that's in this house right now and give you a vision or tell you something at night while you sleep. He can just come to one of us and we can stand up here and tell the rest to you. That's how God works. So he said, look, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Read 20 again. He has not dealt so with any nation. Mm -hmm. And as for his judgments, they have not known. Uh -huh. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord behind that too, right? See, Israel, we've been stiff-necked. That's why things messed up. But he still only deal with Israel. Let's see if Jesus changed that when he came. Matthew uh, 10. Because people think Jesus came with something different. He changed everything. But the Bible say God don't change. The Bible say even about Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Matthew 10. Yeah, Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Oh, that, I had 20 on there. Yeah, that's 10. Matthew 10. It's a good thing I have my handwritten notes. Matthew 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Because now we saw clearly the word is for all nations. But we seeing where the word start at. The word start with Jacob, with Israel. That's where it start at. See, but brothers and got carried away and act like they the only ones. Israel the only one. You know, the white man is the devil. He gonna just get rid of the white man. That don't make no sense at all. 
That don't make no sense. You saying God is a respect of persons. Right. You telling me a Gentile could do everything God said do in his word and he going to get put him in hell. And he going to save somebody else who's a no good, low down, dirty son of a gun. <laughs> nah, God is no respect of persons like that. He don't operate like that. But now, Matthew 10 and verse 5. Go ahead. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. Uh -huh. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now you see what Jesus, this is his twelve disciples. Notice he had twelve disciples. Why? In honor of the twelve tribes of Israel. He was in, he was in line to the T. And he knew what his mission was. He knew where he had to start at. So that's why he sent his 12 disciples. He said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. Now, if you just stop reading the Bible here, you could say, well, God don't want nobody else to hear it, right? Mm -hmm. But see, we know it's much more to read. But this just show you where he started, at, brothers and sisters. Now, he, so he, he was clear. He said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to no city of the Samaritans. Now, who were the Samaritans? They were non-Israelites who had been implanted in the land. And some of them even thought they had been there so long. They thought they was a part of it. They was wondering why the real Israel didn't pay them no attention. Because they had been following some of the customs. See, you can even fool yourself after some years. So them Samaritans was in the land. But see, Jesus and the rest of the Israelites knew they wasn't the, the real Jews. They wasn't Israel. They knew it. So Jesus made it plain. He said, don't go talk to the Gentiles. Don't go talk to the Samaritans. That make it sound like he a little, he a little prejudiced, right? right? No, he just got order. Right. Didn't he say he show his word unto Jacob? Right. Yep. So when he come in the flesh, who he going to start with? Nobody but Israel. Right. So he said, don't go into the Gentiles, into any city of the Samaritans, any ye not read six again. <clears throat> but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But go rather to the lost sheep. Of the house of Israel. Still Israel, isn't it? That's all he was concerned with for the time being, right? Because that's who he start with. He show his word unto Jacob like we just read. And he don't deal with no other nation like that. So when he come in the flesh, he going to keep it straight. Go ahead. What did he say do? Verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, now he told him to go preach, but he only sent him to go preach to Israel, right? Mm -hmm. So again, if you stop here... You might have a case to say, well, the gospel is only for Israel. But see, we know the story continues to evolve. The story continues to go on. Let's go further. Let's go to a John 4. Because even Jesus, when he encountered, now he didn't go purposely looking for no Gentile or no Samaritan, but he happened to bump into one at the well. He bumped into a Samaritan woman. He going to preach to the woman and tell her she can get saved if she pay attention. This show you how awesome God is. He's going to give you an example right here. Now, he already told them don't go preaching, looking for them people. And he didn't go looking for her. He just happened to bump into this woman. But when he bumped into her, he still offered her salvation. We're going we gonna to see. John, the fourth chapter. This is what we don't, we don't understand the whole story. You got Israelites saying uh, all the nations going to get killed. They didn't mess the Israel up who they really are. I guess since they're going to kill all... The Gentiles, what they call white people, they had to make a way to include some other people. So they said, well, these other people, the Puerto Ricans and, and the Mexicans, you know, they, and the Indians, they all a part of Israel. That's ludicrous. <laughs> what other nation you know made up all kind of different races? There's no nation on the planet like that. So we know Israel is a black nation, period, and cursed by God. But God is a God of all nations, and he's going to save people from all nations. He just started with Israel. John 4 and 9. Pay attention. Now, this is Jesus now. See, we just showing. He's dealing with all. He's going to deal with all nations. But everything is centered around Israel. So you need to get the full understanding. 4 and 9. Go ahead. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, uh -huh. which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Okay, now see, th this woman knew. This woman knew what the M.O. was. She asked him Jesus. She said, now, because what how we skipped over, you can read on your own the whole chapter, whenever you get time. 
Jesus bumped into this woman and he was thirsty. And she drawing some water from the well. And he said, look, the only thing he said, give me something to drink. And so this is her reply to him. You know, she, she figured she in the driver's seat now. You're going to ask me for something to drink. I could probably see her turning her neck. <laughs> You're going to ask me for something to drink. So that was her reply to Jesus. Then said the woman, us submit. Now, we just read what Jesus said. Don't go preach to them, right? right. Well, he said, don't go to none of their city, which meant he didn't want them to hear. Or the Gentiles. It wasn't time yet. But now this woman of Samaria said unto him, how is it? And she understood the, the, the plan. She said, how is it thou being a Jew, ask his drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan. See, the Jews knew that they weren't Israel. And Jesus backed that up because he said, don't even go preach to him, didn't he? Yeah. But now, notice what Jesus told the woman. Show you, he still wasn't limiting salvation from him in the long run. Verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, uh -huh. thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. He said, he said Woman, don't get carried away with that little water you got down there. You're pulling out that well. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Let me, let me tell you something. He said, If you understood the gift, if you really knew who was talking to you, woman, you would, be, you would skip this little physical water and you would ask me for some spiritual water. It's going to get you eternal life. But that lets you know he's trying to tell a woman, you can save yourself. I'm one of the ones that got it. You can save yourself. Yeah, I might be a little thirsty now, but that's going to pass. Your thirst ain't going to end until you get it. Notice he said you can ask me, right? But now, conversation kept going on and finally... He said a few things to her, even about her life, where she knew that she said, this guy is somebody special. This guy is a prophet, right? So then, but then she started puffing herself up like, yeah, well, we know. We, we know how to worship. We do this. We've been doing this around here for so long. Finally, Jesus had to break the news to her. Verse 21. Skip down. To verse, again, you can read all this on your own. We just don't have time to read all these verses. We read a hundred times more verses on the average Sabbath than most people get on, on a Sunday in church. But we still don't have time to read them all. Verse uh, <clears throat> 21. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. See, she, she had said some stuff to Jesus that finally got on his last nerve. She's talking about, yeah, well, our Father's worshiping this mountain. I think you're right. She called him a prophet now. But see, flattery don't get you nowhere with the Lord. You can't flatter me and then... And then say something wrong the next minute. So she called him a prophet and said, well, yeah, but our father's worshiping this mountain. I think you're a prophet because you said such and such, blah, blah, blah. Jesus said, woman, believe me. The hour will come when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the father. Now he's going to break the bad news to her. Verse 22. You worship, ye know not what. See what he told her? He said, let me tell you something. Because, see, she was a non-Israelite. It's given to Israel first. We read that, didn't we? We read in Psalm, he said, his word is given to Jacob and his statutes to Israel, right? right? Then when Jesus come, he didn't change it. He only went fishing for Israel at first, didn't he? Right. He said, don't go to the cities of Samaria or to any other Gentiles, right? right? It's only for Israel to start off. So that's who going to know how to worship God, the ones who God has given it to. But it's not given to them to keep for themselves forever. Now it's given to them so they can show everybody else. Right. That's why even though Jesus told his disciples, don't go to Samaria, when he bumped in this woman, he offered it to her, didn't he? Yeah. He said, well, this is a chance meeting. Look, you, you, give me some water. She started talking jazz, and he said, look, if you understood the gift, you would ask me for some water, which is the word, which is the spirit. Which is really the word. People talk about the spirit. They don't know what it is. The spirit is what fills you up right here. Because right. I can listen to any kind of music and have me a drink and be feeling good and wave my hands in the air. Right. Right. It don't even have to be no gospel music. Right. It can be, they got some nice, what they call secular, nice, smooth songs, R&B. It can be one of them. I can be doing this. <laughs> feeling good. Might even start crying like the sister said. But, so, but that don't signify the spirit, brother and sister. The spirit is the wisdom that go in your mind. That's the water. The water, he, he said water, right? He offered this woman water, right? Living water. He, uh, Ephesians 5 tells you it's the water of the word. 
Because that's what clean you up. It go right here to clean you up all over if you let it. That's the real water. But that's what he offered. I'm just pointing out. He offered the woman to offer her this even after he told his disciples, don't go deal with none of them, right? Because he just bumped into her. So now read 22 again. Ye worship, ye know not what. But he had to tell her. He said, look, you worship, you know not what. But now who do know? We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Wait a minute. You mean Jesus told the Samaritan woman she don't know what she worships? Then he just didn't say, I know what I'm worshiping. You know, because of course Jesus knows. Everybody say that, right? Well, of course he know, right? But he didn't just say, I know what I worship, right? He, he, made, a, he made an inclusive of his people, period, didn't he? Yeah. He said, we know. Why do we know? Because it's only given to we. It's only given to Israel. We saw that, right? Mm -hmm. Who did Jesus come to? Matthew 15, he said, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he didn't go to Arabia. They got some books outlined talking about, you know, later on he went to England. Quit lying. <laughs> that don't make no sense. People really will tell a lie in a minute. He didn't go nowhere. He only went to the lost sheep. But he knew later on he was going to send the disciples out because in John 10, he said, let me tell you, I got other sheep which are not of this folk. I got to go get them and bring them too. So he had the disciples prep to go to everybody else. That's why at the end when he resurrected, he went back and told them, go preach to all nations, which we read, right? Right. But now he said, you worship, you know not what? We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So don't let nobody tell you Israel or the Jews. That's just slang for Israel, really, because all the other tribes was gone. Don't let nobody tell you, though, that they don't matter to God. People say that all the time. Oh, see, you talking about the Jews and Israel. I, don't, I just want to get salvation. Duh. <laughs> if you want to get salvation, back to square one, right? right. What is salvation of? Did I write that? Mm -mm. Read it again. <laughs> Ye worship, ye know not what. Uh huh. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Somebody better pay attention that really wants salvation. You got to pay attention. Salvation is of the Jews. So that lets you know where it started. But it's for everybody because he was, he was a Jew offering it to this Samaritan woman, wasn't he? Right. Now, let's go further. Go to uh, Romans 2. <clears throat> Romans, the second chapter. See, Paul understood it. Paul didn't get converted until years later. Now, of course, he was an Israelite. That's why he wrote all these letters. Notice it wasn't a Gentile that wrote all these letters to the Gentiles. Right, right. No, it was an Israelite who got the word and had to take it to the Gentiles. Paul was an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. <clears throat> Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Again, that just shows you the order. So you understand <clears throat> that he started with Israel, but it's to be spread out to everybody. The gospel is for all nations, for all nations. And these uh, Israelite brothers better find out that's telling people it's only for Israel and he's going to destroy all the Gentiles. You're going to find yourself on the outside looking in. And the Bible tells you that. Why you worried about trying to put somebody else in hell, you're going to end up there. You better pay attention. That's why people say, well, they didn't, you know, people didn't done us wrong. Look, ain't no, God is the one done you wrong. It couldn't happen unless God allowed it. And anybody who got some payment coming from God, because God allowed people to do what they do, but anybody that got some payment coming from God, God going to give it to them. He's going to be the one, because the Bible said vengeance whose? He didn't say vengeance was these jakes out here standing on the corner. He said, vengeance is mine. Now, he's going to have some, some of his humble servants with him, which is what I'm trying to be. But vengeance is God's. So you can rant and rave all you want to. That ain't going to change nothing. Vengeance belongs to God. He know who to get and who not to get. See, we don't know that. We don't know that much. We've been to kill the wrong person. And that's what people are doing. How are you going to walk up to a person just because how they look and say, well, God going to put you in hell? What kind of sense do that make? That don't make no sense at all. Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 6. Go ahead. Who will render to every man according to his deeds? See, again, God is no respect of person. God is fair. Whoever 
Do what he wants you to do. That's who he going to reward, a good reward. So that's what he's saying here. Who will render to God? It's talking about God who will render to every man. And that includes woman because woman is a part of mankind. He will render to every man according to his deeds. And that includes whether you black, white, blue or green, whether you are Jew, Gentile or Jew, it don't matter. Whoever you are, he's going to render to you according to your deeds. And he's going to break it down. But it's order to it, but it's still everybody. Verse 7. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. See, to them, which is anybody, anybody fit them. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing. You got to do something though, right? Mm -hmm. Patient, and you got to be patient and continue to do it too. It ain't good enough to just start. You got to finish this race. That's what Paul said. I run the race. I'm fighting a fight. He talked about fighting a good fight, but people want to be presto saved. Sorry to tell you, it don't work like that. He said, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, if you're doing what you're supposed to do, seeking for the prize, he said, you're going to get eternal life. But on the other hand, verse 8, but unto them that are content. Oh, if you content, if you want to kick against the truth, what else? And do not obey the truth. And don't obey the truth. What else? But obey unrighteousness. Uh-huh. Indignation and wrath. See, you got coming what? Indignation and wrath. What else? Tribulation and anguish. Tribulation and anguish. Go ahead. Upon every soul of man that doeth evil. Uh-huh. Of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Oh, that's clear, right? God is fair across the board. Whoever do what they supposed to do, he going to get them a good reward. But whoever don't do... They got some punishment coming. And he started with the Jew. Because he, he said, look, if I start with you giving you the word, when I get ready to dish out the punishment, I'm going to bust your head first. Right. You had the first opportunity to get it right. You didn't get it right. You're going to get the first opportunity to feel my wrath. That's why we as a people are suffering more than anybody now. Because we were the ones that got the word. Right. We knew better. Where the other people, the Germans can say, look, God, you know, if you would have came, came and gave it to me, I would have did right. I ain't like them hard-headed, stiff-necked Israelites. And God got to say, okay, I'm just going to slap you a little bit. You're right. But he got to give us the whole fist because we knew better. So that's what he said. He said, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. But what's the order? The Jew first and also of the Gentile. Now, how can you make anything out of this? But this is physical Gentile. You know, some of these Israelites get smart. They try to say that, yeah, I know they're talking about Gentiles. See, but that was just Israelites among the Gentiles. Give me a break. This is Gentile. This is clearly he's talking about some other nations, right? Go ahead, verse 10. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. Oh, if you do the right thing, every man, whoever you are, whatever you look like. All you got to do is do what God is telling you to do. But you got to find out what direction he's coming from because he gave that to Israel. He showed it all to Israel. That's why all this Bible is dedicated to Israel. So he said, but still, whoever you are, glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good. Is it order? Go ahead. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Why he keeps saying the Jew first? Because it's everything is first with the Jews. Didn't Jesus say salvation is of the Jews? Mm -hmm. It's coming from the Jews. See, and it wouldn't matter to me if the Jews was blue or green or white. It wouldn't matter to me because that would be how God set it up. So I don't preach that Israel is black because it's some, like some uh, Edomite was trying to say, well, maybe y'all trying to build some self-esteem from black people. That's some foolishness. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter to me. Matter of fact, I, t I t told you it didn't matter. It ain't matter to most black people all their life thinking that Jesus was white, right? My grandmother, I told I told the story a hundred times, my grandmother died. She still had that little saucer on her wall, the little saucer with the white Jesus. I tried to get her to take it down. She wouldn't take it down. So she didn't, it didn't matter to her if Jesus was white. I tried to tell her where it's a lie. He don't look like that. But you don't even need a black one on your wall. Because you don't need no images. But the bottom line is, Whatever color Israel is, it ain't no big deal. It's just a fact that Israel is black. That's all it is. But God is saving people from all over, right? 
of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Verse 11, go ahead. For there is no respect of persons with God. Oh, that's why. There is no respect of persons with God. If you do his will, he ain't going to look at what color you is and say you the devil because you look a certain way. That's foolishness. There is no respect of persons with God. But now, it's no respect of person, but it is order, right? Because he keeps stressing the Jew first and then the Gentile, right? He got order. But now, let's go to uh, Acts 10. We're going to look at this. We're going to skip through this chapter because this is a scenario where people try to say you can eat anything. Look, I'm going to tell you, God don't change. If God told you swine and pork was unclean, in, not just in Leviticus. I'm talking about you go back to the flood in Genesis, the seventh chapter with Noah. Noah knew about unclean and clean animals. There's no reason for God to tell you it's unclean one day then tell you it's okay to eat the next. That's, that's a schizophrenia God. You don't know what to believe. He didn't do that. And people read this Acts 10 and said, see, God said he cleaned up the meat. It ain't got nothing to do with meat. What he is doing is what this lesson is about. He's letting Peter know it's time to go to some other people. Don't look at them as unclean. So he sent him a vision about some animals, which it was animals. Peter wasn't getting ready to eat them animals in the vision. It was just a vision to get his attention. Shoot, he would have had to kill the animals and then clean them up and eat them. He wasn't getting ready to do all that. It was a vision. Some people even think, they say, well, brother, you say I can't eat certain things. I said, no, the Bible said, but no, Peter ate some stuff in the Bible. I don't know where it is. I said, I know where it is, and he didn't eat nothing. <laughs> That's saying you know you don't know the Bible when, you know, somebody else got to give you your scripture. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I said, I know where it is. Come on, Tom, let's read it. I'm going to show you it don't mean that either. And it don't. This was a vision about Cornelius and Italian. And I'm telling you, these Israelites is crazy. They, even, they try to say he was just an Israelite among the Italian. Look, when you read this, it's clear. It's clear. He was from another nation. Don't fool yourself. Acts 10 and 1. Go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a satirian of the band called the Italian band. See, now, this tells you who he is. And not only is it calling him Italian, but you know Israel wasn't that deep in no army where they were centurions. So that's twofold. So, and we're going to read about a centurion later on who was from another nation. So now, but it says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. So he's a general in the army, in the Roman army. This guy is a Roman. He's an Italian. But it didn't matter. He believed in the God of Israel. He believed in the real, the one and only God, and he was seeking the one and only God. So God finally is opening the door for the Gentiles and other nationalities to come in now. Because it was just a matter of time. That's why Jesus, even though he said he was only sent to the lost sheep, he said, I got other sheep that got to come later. They got to come. I'm going to bring them, and we're going to be one fold. That's why the Lord says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's not one way for the Methodists and another way for the Catholics. No, it's one way, and it don't start with no denomination. Who it start with? Israel. Israel. Of people. That's who it start with. That's who God gave his, his gospel to, his word to. Even Jesus. But now, verse 1 said there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Read verse 2 just to add a little more to that. A devout man and one that feareth God with all his house uh -huh. he gave much alms to the people. Now he gave much alms to what people? Since he was Italian, he knew Israel was the people, so he gave much alms to Israel. He was trying to help God's people out. And that's only right if you got something and they giving you the word, Paul said that's only right for you to do that. Just like he said in Romans 15, he said, if you've been partakers of, of, the, of Israel's spiritual things, it's only right that they partake in your carnal thing. So that's what Cornelius was doing. But again, it's letting you know he was from a, another nation. He wasn't an Israelite in Italy or Caesarea. No, he was an Italian. So he, he gave much honor to the people and prayed to God always. Now, we're going to skip over all this because he saw a vision. And ultimately, the vision told him, look, you got to go get an Israelite. You got to go call for Peter 
And Peter is going to preach the word to you, tell you how to save yourself. Because God got order. We saw it's always the Jew first. So how else is this Italian going to get the word unless God sent him a Jew that know the word? Because God don't, even though the angel came to him, now I'm sure the angel could have told Cornelius everything he needed, right? But the angel don't even get out of order. The angel said, look, I'm here to tell you, call Peter. And he sent some servants to Peter. And Peter, that's when Peter saw the vision about the animals that came down. And Peter was just had the vision. He wondered, what the heck is God trying to show? Matter of fact, Peter rebuked the Lord in the vision. That show you Peter still had faith and knew what the word said. The vision told Peter, rise, kill and eat. Peter said, uh -huh. I don't know, I don't know who, where that boy's coming from. I don't know who. He, now that's something, boy. You got to really be standing on something. You hear a voice come out of nowhere talking about rise, Peter. And you say, uh, I don't know who you are, but not so. And then the voice came again. He said, not so. And he never ate nothing. The, the vision, the sheep went back up. He didn't eat nothing. And then he said, what, what is the Lord trying to tell me? Soon as he wondering, they come knocking at the door from Cornelius. Look, Cornelius wants you to come. And he took six brothers and he got there. We skipping over all that. You can read on your own. We're going to get to verse 28 when Peter got to Cornelius' house. Now pay attention to this. Verse 28. Go ahead. And he said unto them, you know how it is, that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Uh, now look, just let you know Cornelius and the people with him was from another nation, right? I mean, how clear can it be? But you know, I had an Israelite tell me, well, see, uh, he, he was kind of stumped. He said, well, see, Cornelius was an Israelite, but yet yeah, the other people was other nations. I'm like, give me a break. He's still preaching to all of them, it don't matter. He's still talking to all of them. He's still inclusive of people of other nations, right? right? But Cornelius was the one from the other nation as well. We saw he was an Italian. I mean, it just shows you when you believe a lie, you will stretch it to the max. You will try to make anything fit. So why did he have to say this? You know that it's an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. That lets you know Cornelius and all his clan, they was from, they was Italian, they was Romans. He said, I mean, Peter basically said, you know, I, you, I shouldn't even be doing this, really. We got laws about this. We don't get down like this. But what? But God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. See, that's what the vision of the sheep was. It didn't have nothing to do with cleaning up pork so you can eat it. Cleaning up catfish so you can eat it. It's, it's a whole lot of fish you can eat without eating catfish and unclean stuff. It's a whole lot of meat you can eat without eating. Just let the pork go. I know it ain't easy when you first think about it because I remember pork wasn't that hard for me. But when I had to let them shrimp go, I said, wait a minute. Is that you sure that say that? But I let it go. Because the Lord said it's not good for you. It's unclean. So I'd rather obey the Lord than enjoy myself with a few, few little pieces of ugly meat. But now, because it don't look that good, it just tastes good. But now, so now he said, but God have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean, right? That's what he said. So he was understood that not to disregard these people from these other nations now. That they got to hear the word too. Now we're going to skip a little bit more. Skip down to verse 34 because after Cornelius told him, you know, that he had saw this vision and all of that, because once he told him that, you know, he still didn't know well, what happened. Why you want me here? Because he just knew Cornelius called him and he knew he had the vision. So he said, look, I'm here. You know, I really shouldn't be here. So what's the deal? And Cornelius said, well, look, I had a vision. The angel told me to call for, you know, call for you, such and such, such and such. So, uh, and that's what I did. And you did good to come because the angel told me to call for you. So when Peter heard that, what did Peter say now in verse 34? Again, you can read it all on your own. Go ahead. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Oh, he perceived that as well, didn't he? Isn't that what Paul said? He got order only. The Jew first, then the Gentile, but he is no respect of person. Therefore, anybody that want to do his will is going to be accepted, right? Don't matter what color they are. Color is a gimmick made that man put too much emphasis on anyway. It's just a gimmick. What's the big difference between somebody black and white? They use the same toilet. 
They eat. They gotta eat some food. They gotta uh, eat. Every one of them gotta take them a nap every day. You gotta lay down for a little bit of time. So ain't no big difference, is it? So, but the bottom line is, he said, God have showed me. What verse was that? Verse thirty-four. Read it again. Then Peter opened his mouth and, and said, "Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons." See, he's no respecter of persons. But what? But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Now, you can't get no clearer than that, right? No in way. every nation. That lets you know it wasn't some Israelites among the Italians who Peter went preaching to, right? Mm -hmm. No, he went preaching to the Italians. Another nation besides Israel. We have made it clear God started with one nation, Israel, right? He said he ain't dealt so with no other nation. But we see also that he opened the door for the others to come in and notice. They got to come in to what's already set up with Israel. So they got to come to Israel's house to get the word. Or they got to call Israel to their house to bring the word. Either way, like in this case. Right. But they got to be a part of what Israel already had. It's not like uh, Israel going to get the word from the Gentiles. It don't work like that. See, that's where the Pope is off base at. He's saying he over this thing now. Look, he's one of the ones that, that come from, uh, well, he's not one, but the, the Roman Catholicism was set up by the Italians, and they the ones that had to get the word from Israel right here. Now, how they run it now when God don't deal like that? They can't run it. But now, he said, every nation he that feareth God and worketh rights is accepted with him. Verse 36, 10 and 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. See, he said, at 35, he said, he realized. Peter was, Peter was happy to understand this. He said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but people from every nation that fear him and work righteous is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto who? The children, the children of, Israel. of Israel. See, that's who the word went to, but Peter understood it's going out to other nations now. You see how clear that is? How are you going to make this like this is some Israelites Peter preaching to when he clearly distinguished in between Israel who got the word and the other nations who are now getting it? The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Skip down one more time to verse, uh, I meant to read, I didn't have it on the handout. Is it? Now, we're going to go right to the 11th chapter. 11 and 1. Go to Acts 11 and 1. Because I was going to read where they got baptized, but that's okay. Because that's what happened later on. Peter started preaching to them. And the Gentiles started uh, speaking in tongues. And then they said, look, we got to go ahead and baptize these, these uh, Gentiles. Because the word was poured out on them too. Matter of fact, back up and read verse uh, 44. Because Peter started preaching to him. We're going to throw this in. Verse 44. Go ahead. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. See, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit fell on all these people. Now, they've been endowed with some understanding. All of a sudden, just, to, just as a sign to let Peter and them know this thing is for real. So that really got Peter's attention. And the, and the other brothers that's with him. Go ahead. And they of the circumcision which believe, which believe were astonished. See, the circumcision is Israel. That lets you know again, it's distinguishing Israel from these Gentiles. So the, 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 the Israelites that went with Peter, they were shook up. Because they probably was in doubt, still, still, still second guessing themselves, like wondering if they should be there. Yeah, I don't know about this. Because that was a big thing for them. That's why God had to go through all that trouble to get that vision of Peter. Because other than that, Peter wouldn't have went. That's why that's the first thing come out of his mouth when he got there. He said, I ain't even supposed to be here. You know, I, it's unlawful for me to be here. And he knew he was going to catch some drama from the brothers when he went back. He knew that because that's the way Israel is. It's just like some Israelites come in here. I'm telling you, we have an Israelite sister went to our Philadelphia church. And she seen a Gentile sister in there. And she had a conniption. Because they don't understand. But hey, whoever do God's will is accepted with him. But now, so he said, they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Why are they astonished? 
As many as came with Peter. Oh, it was about six of them because Peter kept quoting. He said, well, you know, I took these six brothers with me. They, they witnesses. Go ahead. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, you going to tell me this is not really Gentiles? What would they be astonished about if it was just some Israelites among the Gentiles? They know it's for Israel. That's why they go on preaching to Israel. No, this is clearly other nations, right? That's why the title is the gospel for all nations. So they was astonished because now they got the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to the 11th chapter. Let's go to the 11th chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 11 and 1. Go ahead. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea. Acts 11 and 1. I'm sorry. But you there. Go ahead. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. See, now back home, boy, they, they got the message. But see, they weren't happy about it. Because these Israelites were stiff-necked, hard-headed. And somewhere in their mind, they really thought because Jesus only started with Israel, that it was always only going to be for Israel. Now, God just got a starting point. But ultimately, it was for everybody. That's why he healed that woman in uh, that woman daughter in Matthew 15. He told her point blank. She was, even, she was a Canaanite. He said, look, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. She said, Lord, help me, help me. My daughter got a devil. Just help me. She said, and he said, ain't good for me to take the children's bread and cast it to, to the dogs. And that woman still accepted the protocol and the plan of God. She said, yeah, but don't the dogs get at least a few crumbs? And Jesus himself broke down. He said, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do it for you this time. I'm going to go out of order for you because you got great faith. That show you even though he got order, it's always, it's meant for everybody else anyway. That show you that. So even though he was only sent to Israel, it was just a matter of time until it got to everybody else. But these Jews didn't understand it. So when the apostles got back, when Peter got back, it said in verse 1, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had all so received the word of God. Instead of being happy, what they do? Verse 2. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. See, now, if it was just some other Israelites among the Gentiles, why would they be arguing with the brother? Right, right. They was hot with Peter. See, that's why Peter was smart. He took them some people with him. Like, look, man, I had a vision, all this. Because they would stone you in a minute in Israel. Right. They was crazy. So it said, when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they from among Israel, that's the circumcision, they contended with him. That means they having a debate and an argument, right? right. What they say, verse 3. Saying, thou went as in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. See, and it wasn't because they was Israelites and uncircumcised, because Israel still got circumcised. They still got circumcised. These were Gentiles who didn't get circumcised, didn't know nothing about it. They said, you went in to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. And if you Gentiles now, you still need to get circumcised. Paul and them just gave him a break, starting off. But you still got to get circumcised every because there's one law for everybody. Right. If you didn't have to get circumcised, why in uh, Acts 16 did Paul circumcise Timothy, which was a Greek? His father was a Greek. That lets you know it still need to be done. He, they just gave him some time to come around to that and didn't want to put all that other baggage on them. But now... He said, thou went as in to men uncircumcised and did eat. Then Peter broke it down. We're going to skip that part. He said, look, man, I'm going to tell you, I seen a vision. This man, Cornelius, seen a vision. What you want me to do, go against God? So once they realized that, they said, okay, hey, if, they, if it happened like that, we can't argue against it. And so what they say at verse, uh, verse, uh, what verse is that? Verse. verse 18. Skip down to verse 18 because they contended with him, but then what? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Right. See, Peter broke it all down to him. I'm talking about he didn't miss a beat because he knew they probably had some bricks behind their back about ready to hit him. He said, Look, man, I'm telling you, I seen a vision about the sheep came down, and this man had seen a vision. I went to his house. All his people was gathered. I stopped preaching to him. The spirit fell on. What you want me to do? What you want? I, I couldn't do nothing with that. So when they heard all of that, Peter found it last thing. He told them the Spirit fell on them. That's when they said here, verse 18, when they heard these things, they held their peace. They finally shut up. And they glorified God, saying, Then have God also to the Gentiles granted repentance 
unto life. That's clearly some more people, isn't it? Yes. They being added to the body. See, that's the key, though. Other nations got to get added to Israel's body. Israel don't go to Rome and get added to the Pope's body. Now, the Pope need to come here or somewhere, find him some Israelites, and get rid of the, the false teaching that he's dealing with. I'm just being honest with you. But now, he ain't going to do it, though. But anyway, uh, Acts, the 13th chapter. Because I know how the story is going to end. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Keep reading. Verse 19. We, we skipped a little bit. Verse 19. Acts 11 and 19. Go ahead. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, mm -hmm. preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Oh, see now, because the Gentiles was hearing the word now, they finally started hearing it. So what he did, he backed up. He said, because prior to this time, that's really what he's telling you. Nobody, no Gentiles hadn't been hearing the word. See, this was the beginning of it. And so that's why he backed up, which really he backed you up to Acts the seventh chapter, because that's when Stephen got killed. Paul wasn't even in the word when Stephen got killed, because the people that stoned Stephen to death in Acts the seventh chapter, Paul held the people close. The one who was called Paul, whose name was really Saul. He held the people close. He was on their side instigating the stone in a Stephen. God just forgave him because he was in ignorance. He didn't know no better. So in other words, he backed up just to give you an overall view that prior to this time with Cornelius and them coming into the word, they weren't preaching to, they was just preaching to the Jews scattered among the Gentiles. But Cornelius wasn't a Jew scattered among the Gentiles. He was an Italian. That's why when he said, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution of Steph, the persecution that arose about Stephen, that's in Acts the seventh chapter. Traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews. See, that's all they was focusing on at first. Until the Lord showed them, look, it's, it's not just for the Jews, now it's for everybody. Go ahead, verse 20. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, speak unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. See, now they're preaching to all people now. They're preaching to all nations because they understood the gospel is for all nations. Let's go to uh, Acts 13 now. See, this is clear. These are other people being added to the body. Israel had filled the church up. It was millions of Israelites who had turned to the truth, recognized Jesus was the Messiah. Then after that, the Lord opened the door and the floodgates opened for the Gentiles to come in. After that, Acts 13 and we're going to pick it up at verse 42. Acts 13. But it's amazing that we got the nerve to try to put somebody in hell and we'll step away from hell. That's amazing. We got the nerve to call somebody a devil. Like I said, that's old Muslim doctrine. Old school Israelites. Because even Elijah Muhammad was an Israelite before he was a Muslim. But that's old school doctrine. Talking about the white man and the devil. And we some of the biggest devils on the planet. Whoever doing wicked, that's who the devil is. That's who you acting like. But now, Acts 13, like I said, I know because I ain't, ain't been too many bigger devils than me the way I used to be. So I can't even lie. Acts 13 and verse 42. Go ahead. And when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, who are, are these all Israelites right here? Clearly not, right? Paul preaching to the Jews in the synagogue and the Gentiles hanging out on the outside trying to get some. That's how the Gentiles were. They was hungry for the word. It was just a matter of time. God said, seeking you're going to find, right? That woman who sought Jesus to get her daughter healed, she eventually got it, didn't she? She had to be persistent, yes. but she got it. We got to be persistent. We can't give up when it looks like things ain't going like we want them to go. He said, look. When the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. These are people from other nationalities now. If it was Israelites, they would have all been in the synagogue, right? They all there, right? Mm -hmm. But see, the Gentiles couldn't just readily go in the synagogue. They was halfway scared because them Jews be looking at them crazy. But go ahead, 43. Now when the congregation was broken up, Many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, uh -huh. who, speaking to them, persuaded them to come into the grace of God. 
He said he persuaded them to continue in the Let grace of God. Go ahead. God, excuse me. And the next Sabbath day came also the whole city together to hear the word of God. Okay, now the Gentiles said that. Notice that the Gentiles didn't ask for no Sunday service either. See, we mixed up. We think it's one way for the Jew and then another way for the Gentile. We didn't let, we didn't let people fool us with that. Look, that don't fit. Salvation is of the Jews, right? So what the Lord gave, that's what, that's the key to all of that. What the Lord gave Israel is what we all need to follow. Even if I knew I wasn't Israel, I would have to admit that that's what we have to follow. Right. It don't matter. Salvation is of the Jew. So it's not a Jewish Sabbath and a Christian Sabbath, is it? Jesus kept what Sabbath? The Jewish Sabbath. So if you're going to follow Jesus, you're going to keep his Sabbath. The so-called Christian Sabbath, that's Satan's Sabbath. He gave that to you. He made that up because it's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one way to do this. But people then deceived us with this doctrine about, you know, it being a different way for you. You know, you could do it your way and I could do it my way. It don't work like that. That's why the Gentiles, it said, they besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. They didn't say, well, you know, we have our church on Sunday. Can you come tomorrow? And preach to us that on Sunday? No, they didn't say that. They said the next Sabbath, didn't they? And then the congregation broke up. And they turned out and they talked to a few people. And then they said, verse 44, the next Sabbath. So that's the next week, right? So you mean in the New Testament, they still kept the Sabbath, didn't they? And everybody. I talked to a, 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 a Roman Catholic priest one time. He, he, he wasn't going to lie. He couldn't lie. I said, well, what? You know, you're telling me to go to church on Sunday. What day did Paul keep in the New Testament? He said, well, it was, it was sad. He couldn't lie. See, when you know the word, they can't get around it. I said, what day did Paul kept right here? He said, well, it was Saturday. It was Saturday. But see, we changed it later. I said, yeah, and you're wrong. Mm -hmm. You should have left it alone. Paul didn't change it. See, he admitted. He said, well, he just went there because the people was there. Look, if it was supposed to change, he would have changed. He would have known about the change, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, God don't change. So it said, verse 44, read it again. And the next Sabbath day came also the whole city together to uh, hear the word of God. Almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy mm -hmm. and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. See, you always got some stiff-necked Israelites. Just like you're going to have some time to dispute this message because they want to kill all the white people. Look, you a murderer. How you going <laughs> to tell me all these people going to go to hell just because of the way they look? Right, right. Give me a break. He said, when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. And they spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. See, they ain't had no problem with the Gentiles. They ready to hear, but the stiff-necked Jews is the ones disputing, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to, uh, keep reading, I'm sorry, 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Oh, the, and, and we saw it's a Jew first all over the book. Mm-hmm. That lets you know we did, we about to branch out to some more people, even though they had started, but they still wasn't wholesale. Because they really was antsy about doing that. Just like Peter was antsy when he went to Cornelius, wasn't he? Yes. He tiptoed up in there. And then the first thing come out, he said, you really I ain't supposed to be here. I hope you got a good reason for calling me. Even though he saw a vision and all that, he said, you know, it's unlawful for me to be here. So what did you call me for? Then when Cornelius broke down the vision and all that stuff he saw, Peter praised God. He said, hey, I know now that God ain't no respect of person. Right. In every nation, the one that fear God is going to be accepted with. Him. So that's clear. So now Paul is getting on these Israelites, isn't he? Yes. He said, look, he said, they waxed bold, Paul and Barnabas, and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. Had to come to Israel first. Isn't that what? Didn't Jesus say only go to Israel? But. But seeing what? Finish that 46 verse. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. That sounds like some whole new set of people, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, since y'all rejecting it, I tell you what, we turn into the Gentile. That's some more people, right? Yes. Not some Israelites among the Gentiles. He already out there in the field where, where they scattered out at. 
And he talking to the stiff necked Jews, telling them, look, we're getting ready to preach to these Gentiles wholesale. But he said, look, I got scripture to back it up. See, that's the good thing about the Lord. Anything you want to prove, you can prove with the Old Testament, New Testament, backwards and forwards, up and down. So that's what Paul going to quote. He's going to quote something, verse 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. He said, look, the Lord already had this written. He's talking about the Old Testament, which we're getting ready to read. He said, for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light for the Gentiles. We talking some more people, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. He said, look, this has already been planned. The Lord been had this plan that it was going to come to this. I hate, you know, Paul was just under duress and he was forced into it. So he probably hate that it happened that way. But he said, this is book already. Y'all kicking against it. Lo, I'm getting ready to turn the priest of the Gentile because it's already written that he was going to give his, 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 he's really talking about Jesus, but Jesus worked through men. He said, a light to the Gentiles, that his salvation may be where? To the ends of the earth. Go ahead. What, 48, what the Gentiles felt about that? And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad uh -huh. and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. See, the Gentiles was happy to hear that. Because, see, they was just scratching the surface. It was like they had their ear to the wall trying to hear the word. Because that's the way it was. Israel wasn't dishing it out to them. Israel be talking to Israel about the word. The Gentiles come around there and zip up. What y'all talking about? Nothing. Nothing, boss. Because you know the Gentiles still was the boss. Nothing. They wouldn't share the word with them. But now they realized it was time to share it with them. And they was about to do it. And the Gentiles were excited about it. But now he quoted something in verse 47. He said, so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee for a light to the Gentile, that you be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Let's go. We do good to go back and read it. Because the Bible says, Isaiah 49, the Bible says you got a more sure word of prophecy. So even if you misunderstand something in the New Testament, the Old Testament trumped that anyway. But both of them saying the same thing. Isaiah 49. See, that's why we read all these scriptures to make it plain. You just got, you got too many of these Israelites out killing people. Tell them they don't have a chance. Isaiah 49. They don't even know the difference between Edom and the white man and Gentiles. They got them confused. We had a lesson dealing with Edom. Edom is the so-called Jew. He is our twin brother. And the Europeans, those are the Gentiles, what they call white people. They mix them up. But you ain't supposed to hate nobody. They, they want to hate and kill people. But the Bible, even when they come to eat them, you read on your own and do the rhyme. The Bible say, don't abhor an Edomite. People say, well, God hate them. Well, that's God. Right. And God said, vengeance is mine. So he's going to pay everybody that need to be paid. But the Bible told Israel, don't abhor an Edomite. That's what it said in Deuteronomy 23. Because he is your brother. And especially... If you have some, they're going to repent and serve God, which everybody got an opportunity to do that. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. I'm ready. I can't wait for man's kingdom to fall as well. And God going to bring man's kingdom down to the ground. But I ain't hating on individuals just because they look a certain way. Because they might repent and get in, and I'm too busy hating, I'd be left out in the lake of fire. Yeah. Right, right. Isaiah 49 and verse 5. 49 and 5. This is where Paul got his message from, why he said it was commanded already. Verse 5. And now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. See, it's always Jacob first, right? Mm -hmm. That's what Paul said. See, because Jacob then got lost. So it's always a search to bring Jacob back. That's why Jesus said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. But he's not just for Israel. That's ludicrous. So he said, and now said the Lord that formed me. This is really Jesus speaking through the mouth of Isaiah before he even came. He said, now said the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though what? 
Though Israel be not gathered, uh -huh. yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, uh -huh. and my God shall be my strength. That's right, go ahead. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, uh -huh. and to restore the preserve of Israel. He said, that's automatic. That's what they say, that's A-U-T-O, automatic. That got to happen. He said, it's a light thing that you shouldest do that though. That got to happen. It's a light thing that you should have be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Oh, we need some raising too. And to restore the preserved of Israel. We need to be restored, right? Yeah. But that is a light thing. What's even bigger on the agenda than that? What's worldwide? Go ahead. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. He said, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. That sounds like some other nations being added, isn't it? Yes. Because that's who the gospel is for. Even in the Old Testament, your Old Testament, which Hebrews say they believe, is telling you the word is not just for Israel or Jacob, right? It's a light thing for Jacob to come back, right? Right. But he's also going to give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Now, how in the world are you going to make this Israel among the Gentiles when he's drawing a clear distinction, right? He's talking about Israel in the first half of that verse. Obviously, the Gentiles is referring to who? Israel. Gentiles, duh. <laughs> I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that what? That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. All over the world. Not just limited to the 12 tribes of Israel. People from all over the world. Now, we're going to come back to Isaiah. Let's go to Exodus 12. Because it's always been like this. Even when God went to deliver Israel in the first place. This is how it was. Exodus 12, and we're going to go right back to Isaiah and start to wrap it up. Exodus 12. Exodus 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, 37. Because this was at the beginning, this is when Israel came out of Egypt. Exodus 12 and 37. Okay, go ahead. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sokoth. Now, now, who journeyed? The children of Israel. That's who God went to Egypt to get. But see, God, again, is no respect of person. And anybody that believed the message that he given to Israel, they are welcome to be a part of it. Always been that way. In God's mind. He said, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sukkot. About what? About 600,000 on foot that uh, were men beside you. Now this when they leave it, when Pharaoh finally got beat down by God and said, look, I'm letting you go. Because he wouldn't let him go at first. Then he's going to turn around and try to chase him after this. But now they leaving. Probably at least a million people. 600,000. And that's just the men. Besides children. But who else? Verse 38. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. Ah, and a mixed multitude. What do you mean a mixed multitude? That means other people from other nationalities. Other nationalities. It, ain't, it don't even limit, say which nationality, but it lets you know it's other nations. People from other nations. A mixed multitude went up with them. That means it was other people with Israel back here. Go ahead. And flocks and herds even very much cattle. Okay, skip down to verse 43. Because even when it came to keeping the Passover, again, you got to understand, we're about to keep the Passover, but you got to understand how God word thing. It might sound like he didn't want nobody else to keep it at first until you read further. Verse 43, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. See, again, that's why you read the Bible as a whole and don't let somebody take one verse out of context. See, if I just read this verse... I can tell you all day long, see, no stranger can't eat the Passover. If you're not Israel, you can't eat the Passover. Because that's what he said, right? But that ain't what he meant, period. That's not what he meant. But he said, this is the orders of the Passover. There should no stranger eat that. I'm going to show you what he meant. Skip down to verse uh, 47 now. And read, read now. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. All the congregation of Israel had to keep it. Now, a stranger, he wasn't supposed to keep it, and we're going to find out that that was unless he really became a part of Israel, a part of the covenant. Uh, like he told, we, we can read so much on this lesson, it ain't even funny. We can read Ephesians 2, where he told the Ephesians, before you was separated and aliens from Israel, but now you have become a part of the commonwealth of Israel. 
See, you could be spiritual Israel. But these are people from other nations that spiritual Israel. So it sounds like he didn't want no stranger to do it at all. But verse 48, what did he say? And when the stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord. Oh, so he could keep it later on, right? Yes. See, he just couldn't come off the street and keep it. Like, we keeping the Passover, and even if you're Israelite now, you don't know nothing about it. Ain't no need for you to walk in here on the Passover and say, what y'all doing? Oh, we having the, the Passover. We commemorating the death of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, and the, his, you know, his, his death. We commemorating that. Oh, well, I ain't got nothing to do till later on. Can I do it with you? No, you, you can't do that. You need to be a part of it and know what this is about. It ain't something you take lightly, in other words. So you couldn't do that. So that's the way it was with a stranger. A stranger couldn't just be passing through and decide to hang out with you tonight and do it like it's just any old get-together. No, he couldn't do that. That's why he said no strange can do it, but now he's stipulating unless he become a part of the covenant. What did he say? Verse 48, read it again. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Oh, so he could do it if he committed, right? Mm -hmm. He had to commit, though. He said, let all his males be circumcised, and then what? And then let him come near and keep it. So it was always room, is what I'm trying to show you. It was always room for the stranger, wasn't it? For the beginning. He just had to take hold of the covenant. Right, right. He, had to, he had to be all in or all out. Israel was bought all in. They was automatically all in. Wasn't no question. But anybody else coming, they had to get all in like Israel. That's what he's telling you, right? Then he could be a part of it. And he can even keep the Passover. Go ahead. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. Oh, he's just like you now, isn't he? No difference. Even though he's from another nation. Because the gospel is for who? It's for all nations. Go ahead. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. See, you can't eat it. Even to this day, we tell people that. Whether they are Jew or Gentile, we tell them that. And it's, again, brothers and sisters, it's not something for the Christians and something for the Jews where we can go different ways. People try to tell you that a lot. Don't believe it. What is it? 49. One law shall be to him that is homeborn. Uh-huh. And unto the stranger that sojourneth among See, it's one for everybody. For an Israelite and the stranger. One law. Paul didn't say nothing different, did he? Paul said one Lord, one faith, right? That's why when somebody asks you what faith are you, you should tell them it's only one. That's what you need to tell them. See, they didn't fool you telling you it's different faiths and we can all go this different way. Look, it's only one faith according to the Bible. We all got to get on board to that faith. And who was it shown to? It was shown to Israel. Let's go back to Isaiah, this time Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. See, he even told you a long time ago concerning the Sabbath. That's why when the Gentiles came into the truth in Acts 13, they was keeping the same Sabbath that the Jews was keeping. Wasn't no first day of the week Sabbath. That's something that Constantine, the Roman emperor, introduced later. Made that a law in 321 A.D. That was some 300 years after Jesus and Paul in them time. That's a, he, he was a latecomer, wasn't he? So now all of a sudden, they figured out it's, it's supposed to be Sunday. Seemed like somebody figured out how to lie. Because Paul and them didn't change it. Paul kept the Lord's Sabbath day the seventh day. Acts, I mean, Isaiah 56 and 6. Here's when he was telling the stranger that they could be a part of the covenant, even keeping the Sabbath day. Don't make up your own Sabbath day. You ain't got to do that. 56 and 6. Go ahead. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord. Now the stranger is who? A non-Israelite, right? Yes. It's somebody from another nation. So way back in the Old Testament in Isaiah, we read already in Isaiah, he said he was going to be a light to the Gentiles, right? right? Now in Isaiah, he's telling you about the stranger. If they choose to do what we just read in Exodus and be a part of the covenant, take hold of this thing, they can be a part of it, can't they? So that's what he said. Also the sons of the stranger, non-Israelite, that joined themselves to the Lord to do what? To serve him. Uh -huh. And to love the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. To be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Oh, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath. Not make up your own Sabbath. Keep God's Sabbath, which is the seventh day. Everyone that 
keep it the Sabbath from polluting it. See, that's what we're doing today. We're trying to prevent from polluting the Sabbath, doing our own thing on the Sabbath day, handling our own business on the Sabbath day. He said, look, from polluting it and take hold of my covenant, what are you going to do? Now, keep in mind, these are strangers. These are non-Israelites. See, the, uh, the call had already been out to them. It was just a matter of time until it opened up and the floodgates opened for the other nations to come in. Verse 7. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. See what he said? Even them, the stranger. I'm going to bring them to my holy mountain. This is future brothers and sisters, by the way. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. What else? Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. See, that haven't happened yet. This is going to happen when Jesus comes back, but that's another lesson. Go ahead. For mine house shall be called in house of prayer for all people. Well, that's pretty clear, isn't it? I mean, you can't get around that at all, that we're talking about multiple people. It all centers and starts with Israel. We understand that. But we talking all people. You can't make nothing else out of that but other nations, right? For my house shall be called an house of prayer, not just for Israel, right? For who? For all people. For all people. How clear can you get? And if that wasn't clear enough, just read verse 8. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, now, saying. Now, that's automatic. That's a-U-T-O, I can't even hardly spell it. That's automatic, right? He gonna do that. He gonna raise up Israel. We read that in Psalm 49, right? But is that it? The Lord God which gathered the outcast of Israel. What else he say? Yet will I gather others to, to him. Excuse me. Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. Oh, yet will I gather others. See, that's referring to the strangers. He got to gather others besides those that are gathered. Now show you how the Lord don't play. You got some, you got some stiff necked Israelites want to try to kill up people and tell them, look, they, 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 they don't even have a chance to try to serve God. You know, like the movie. That's, that's the way, again, that's that old school Israelite and Muslim doctrine. That's why in the movie, Malcolm X, they show where a Gentile girl came to Malcolm X and said, well, look, what can I do? What can I do? Can I help? Is there anything I can do? Anything? Nope. Can't do nothing. But, she have a right to learn how to get salvation. If you have learned how to get salvation, it's your duty to be able to show it to somebody else. It's your duty. What kind of priest are you and you going to automatically kill up a certain amount of people no matter what they do? You ain't going to even give them a chance to get salvation. What kind of priest is that? That don't make no sense. But see, we know what to tell people. All they got to do is the same thing Israel got to do, repent and start serving the Lord. Because you mess around trying to keep somebody out and you're going to find yourself on the outside. I'm telling you. Right. And this is what he's telling you here. Back up and read verse 4. He tells you something here. Isaiah 56 and 4. Because he's talking about the stranger, but he's going to bring in the children. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Now the eunuch in this case, it referred to an alien, a stranger. Somebody that was not from the nation of Israel. That's why he called them a eunuch, like a dry tree. They wasn't a part of the nation. Go ahead. What are you going to do for the eunuchs that choose the things that please him and take hold of his covenant? Go ahead. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. That lets you know they wasn't sons and daughters, right? Mm -hmm. But God said, even these, if they, if they start keeping my Sabbath and do the things that please me and grab hold to the covenant, even then will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better then of sons and daughters. I'm telling the sons and daughters, they're going to be on the outside looking in. That's what he's telling you here. You too busy trying to kill somebody else, you're going to kill yourself. Go ahead. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And that's pretty good for an outsider, right? Yeah. So in other words, the outsider who get the word last, Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first, right? The outsider who get the word last going to come in and he going to be sitting in the seat and you got the word first, you're going to be on the outside. That's what he's telling you. He said better than a sons and daughters. Now let's see if Jesus knew about this. Go to uh, Matthew 8. Jesus going to tell you about this. These Israelites better wake up. Matthew 8.
Matthew 8. This is the Messiah himself. He understood. So if you believe in the Messiah, pay attention to what he's saying. And again, this is clearly, he about to deal with a guy from another nation. It's sad that we even got to stress a lesson like this, but it's so messed up, you got to. So many, so many people don't understand something simple like this. That the gospel is for all nations. Act, uh, Matthew 8, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. And when Jesus was entering into Capernaum, there came unto him a satyrian beseeching him. Now there go a centurion again, just like Cornelius. Israelites wasn't getting, even if they was in the army, they wasn't getting that high up in there where they were centurions and all that. Cornelius wasn't in a centurion from the Italian band, right? That's what we read. Well, here's another centurion that Jesus is dealing with. And it's going to be clear again, this guy is not an Israelite. He's from another nationality. It's going to be clear. I have to stress that because you got some Israelites saying that the only people that Paul and Jesus and them talked to that, that, that looked like it was Gentile, it was really Israel just among the Gentiles. That's one of the biggest lies they ever came up with. Here is a non-Israelite. A centurion, go ahead, verse 6. Now he came to Jesus, though, what? Verse 6. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Now, I give you that possibly his servant, because Israel was the servants, possibly his servant was an Israelite. I give you that. But yet and still, it don't matter. We dealing with a non-Israelite who's talking to Jesus. Possibly his servant was an Israelite. But see, Jesus is not going to address the situation in the end with the servant. He's going to address the man himself who came to this centurion, which is uh, from another nation. Go ahead, verse 7. He, so now he's he calling on Jesus. He said, look, Jesus, you know, my servant is at home sick. Even some of the uh, Pharisees say, yeah, man, you know, that dude, is he's a good dude. You know, he look out for us. That lets you know he was from another nation. He, he didn't gave our nation a lot of money and did stuff for us. He a good dude. He worthy for you to... Do that for his servant. That's in another place. But go ahead, verse 8. I'm sorry, verse 7. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. See, the man said, my servant is at home sick. He grievously tormented. And Jesus said, that's okay. I will come and heal him. He said, look, I'm going to come to your house and heal the man, your servant. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Oh, this centurion has some faith, boy. He said, you know what? I ain't even worried that you come to my house. Go ahead. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He had some faith because he said, first of all, I ain't worried that you come to my house. And I know what kind of power you got. I, I, I know a little bit about power. I got a little power myself. I know a little bit about it. Just speak the word. I know you got the power. <laughs> Notice this. Go ahead. For I am a man under authority. He said, I got a little power. That's what he mean under authority. Go ahead. Having soldiers under me. Having soldiers under me. Go ahead. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. Uh -huh. And to another, come, and he comes. Uh -huh. And to my servant, do this, and he do it. This. See, he said, look, I got a little power. I tell my servant, go do that. He do it. I tell somebody to do this. So I know you got the power. You ain't even got to come to my house. So much for slapping people upside the head, right? <laughs> he said, you ain't even got to come to my house. Just say the word, master. Just speak the word only. Because I know a little bit about power. What did Jesus say to this centurion? Go ahead. When Jesus heard it. He marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. You see what Jesus said? He said, this is amazing. He said, all the people I've been dealing with among Israel, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. He said, I have not found so great a faith in Israel. Isn't that a shame? That's so we really are stiff-necked people. This man on the outside got more faith in Israel who on the inside of the house already. And therefore, he's going to end up on the inside of the house, and some of the ones lacking faith on the inside, where are they going to be? Outside. On the outside. Just like we just read in Isaiah. He said, look, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. That lets you know this man was not from Israel, right? And he's going to make that clear. Verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, the kingdom of heaven. That's going to be on the earth. Because it's the heavenly kingdom on earth. It's going to be a kingdom right here. It's going to be heaven right here. That's why he said, 
when his will is done in earth as it is in heaven. But now, he said, many going to come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. What do he mean many? Who are these many? These are non-Israelites, other nations. That's why he said from the east and west. They're going to come from all over and get in the king. But what about the stiff-necked children who want to kill everybody up? And don't want to let nobody get in the kingdom. Go ahead. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. See, this is where you're going to be at. You keep fumbling around. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out where? Into outer, into outer, darkness. outer darkness. This is exactly what we read in Isaiah 56. He said he's going to give the outsiders a name better than sons and daughters, didn't he? That means the sons and daughters must have been blew the mission on along the way. He said the children of the king are going to be cast out in the outer darkness. What's going to be in outer darkness? There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not going to be good. But this is the Israelites getting cast out, right? And the ones from the east and west, they're from other nations. So you, God, again, is no respect of persons. Verse 13. He gonna, let's finish it up what he did with the servant. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Uh -huh. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. See, he went on healed. He didn't go like the man requested. He said, you ain't even got to come to my house. Just speak the word. Jesus, I ain't seen no faith in Israel like this. That show you the Lord don't care who you are as a whole. You got to do what he wants you to do. Jeremiah 16, and we're going to wrap it up. See, now that, but the Gentiles, they have to recognize that God do start with Israel and they have to repent because the Gentiles been giving us all this false worship. They have. It didn't all care. Everything we hold dear and think is about Christ don't have nothing to do with Christ and it didn't came, it didn't been perpetuated, I should say, by the Gentiles. It was around before they was in control. See, the Gentiles ain't always been in control of the world. They just been in control of it lately. But even before they was in control, that's so you, you want to say the white man and the devil, look, the world was messed up before the white man got in charge. When black man was in charge, the world was devilish. The world been messed up. Been messed up since Adam sin. It's been going downhill. And we've been dying. People been killing. With the, look, in the God, in, in, when, right, as soon as they got kicked out the Garden of Eden, Cain killed Abel. So that show you it's been messed up. So it didn't start with the Gentiles ruling. But now the Gentiles are ruling now. And they have taught all this false teaching that people believe. And got everything like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10. The Gentiles worship devil. So in essence, the Gentiles are going to have to repent from the falsehood that they have inherited. And come to Israel and worship God the correct way through the word that he give Israel. Gentiles going to, have to do that. And that's what they starting to do. Jeremiah 16. See, this is going to happen. That's why it's important to know where the water is. Where the well is. The well is with Israel. 16 and 19. Go ahead. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, mm -hmm. the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers inherited lies. Vanity and things wherein there is no profit. You see what the Gentiles are going to say in the end? Now the Lord not going to turn nobody that's humbly repenting for what they have falsely believed. He's not going to turn them away if they repent from it. See, the world is full of lies now. And like I said, Rome perpetuated, perpetuated all of them. That's why everything that we do, that we call it holy, it don't have nothing to do with the Lord for the most part. So, but in the end, more and more the Gentiles waking up. Because once the Lord wake Israel up, which he's starting to do, Gentiles going to start waking up too. Because we the preachers, we the teachers. So he said, oh Lord, my strength, my fortune, my refuge in the day of affliction, the Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth. This can't be nobody but some other nationalities, right? And they're going to say, surely our fathers have inherited lies. Vanity. If it was Israel, he would just say it was Israel coming from the ends of the earth, right? He wouldn't call them Gentiles because they scattered among the Gentiles. He would call them Israel. Like he say when he going to gather Israel from all over the world, which he going to do. But now he talking about other nations, the Gentiles. They going to come from the ends of the earth and say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity, and things where there's no profit. Verse 20. 
Shall a man make gods unto himself and they are no gods? That's what we didn't done. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. Mm -hmm. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, and they shall know that th my name is the Lord. See, this when the Lord come back, he going to smash them heavens, and he going to wake everybody up and let them know, look, I run this. And y'all been out of order, but now if you repent, do what I'm telling you to do, you can survive. If not, I got some fire for you. Choose. Zechariah 8. So the Gentiles going to repent. A lot of them going to repent from the lies that they inherited. Zechariah 8. And they're going to come to the one who the Lord gives the truth to. That's just starting a little bit right now, but it's going to be wholesale before it's over with. Zechariah 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Zechariah 8 and verse 20. Okay, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will, also, I will go also. See, now this future too, but go ahead. And many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Uh-huh, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, uh -huh. saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. See, see, they're going to realize what Jesus said. Didn't Jesus say salvation is of the Jews? Yes. Well, that can't be tamed. So, and the other nations going to realize, instead of listening to Papa in Rome, we're going to have to find these people down in the dungeon who really know the truth. Because that's where you find the truth at. You don't find necessarily find the truth high on the hill in Rome. You find the truth, it could be in the dungeon. You could be in prison. You can be the least likely place is where you're going to find it at. So the ones on the bottom is the ones who got the truth. So that's why he said 10 men should take hold of all languages. See, these are other nationalities. It ain't just some Israelites speaking other languages. Because he wouldn't have to say to take hold of a skirt of him that is a Jew. Because, hey, the Jews speak in other languages too, right? The real Jews. So this is other nationalities speaking other languages that's going to grab hold of Israel. He said they're going to take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. And they're going to say, we will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. See, they're going to all get the message. That show you it's still order, but it's for everybody, isn't it? Let's go to Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47. And we're going to wrap it up. One more after this. See, just like when Israel left Egypt, it was a mixed multitude. That means different nationalities went with them. And they went to the promised land. Even those people went in the promised land with them. Then... They was just like Israel. But now, that's going to happen all over again. Because Israel going to go back to the promised land. You got Israelites to talk about that. But they still, they want to they wanna say that other people don't have no part. They don't have no chance. The other nationality. That is not biblical. We're going to see about the other nations right here. Ezekiel 47, and we're going to pick it up at 13. Because again, the Lord started with Israel. Everything's sitting around Israel. So you got to understand that first and foremost. But then you can't go to the extreme to the right and say that he just going to save Israel and kill everybody else. You can't do that. That's not biblical. Now he's going to do this in Ezekiel 47 and 13. What are he going to do with the land again? Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, this shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions. So now we're not going to read all this. He broke it all down. Everybody going to get the same land they had back basically when Joshua inherited to him in the old days. This is in Ezekiel though, right? Way after Joshua, right? right. Yeah. So this lets you know this is future. See, Israel was on their way into captivity in Ezekiel. Some had went into captivity in Ezekiel. So this lets you know this is future, but it's just like when Joshua, you read the book of Joshua, they went and they took over all the promised land, the land of Canaan. Well, they're going to inherit it again because they're in slavery now. So he said, thus said the Lord, this shall be the border whereby ye shall inherit the land according to the what? The twelve tribes of Israel. 
And Joseph got two portions because Levi don't get no portion. So it's still 12 division. Joseph got Ephraim and Manasseh. So Levi don't get no portion because he spread out all over because he's the, the priest for the nation. But he said, this is how you're going to divide it. But now what I want to point out is what about the other nations, people from other nationalities? Are they going to have some, something to say about this and get a part of it? Eventually, verse 21. Go ahead. So shall you divide this land unto you according to the tribes of Israel. See, now you're going to divide it just like he laid out. We ain't reading all of it. But it's being divided among the tribes of Israel, right? Okay, go ahead, 22. And it shall come to pass that you shall divide it by lot for an inheritance unto you. And to the strangers that sojourn among you. Wait a minute, there goes some strangers again. Mm -hmm. Some strangers that sojourn among you. If they believe and do the things that God requires of Israel, why wouldn't they be accepted by God? What kind of God are you, you talking about? Right. We're talking about a God that's no respect of persons, right? So, of course he's going to accept those from other nations that do his will. He said, and to the stranger, that's a non-Israelite, that sojourn among you, which do what? We shall beget children among you. Oh, they're going to be having children among you. See, God's not putting all the Gentiles in hell. He said, they're going to have children among you. Go ahead. And they shall be unto you as born in the country among the children of Israel. Uh-huh. They shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Oh, they're going to have inheritance with you. That means they're not Israelite. Mm -hmm. Physically, they're from some other nation. But spiritually, they're spiritual Israel because they're doing what God requires of Israel, right? So he said, they shall have inheritance with you among the tribes of Israel. Go ahead, 23. And it shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourneth. See, wherever he at, he can be with Ephraim. He can be with Benjamin. He can be with Asher because it's 12 tribes. See, that's how you know Israel is still in slavery because you don't hear nobody talking about the 12 tribes that the Bible talk about because they scattered in slavery now. You only hear people talk about one tribe, Jew, Judah. Well, that's only one tribe technically. But all 12 of them got to be back in the land when, when the Lord fix it back up right. It shall come to pass that in what tribe the stranger sojourneth, there what? There shall you give him his inheritance, saith the Lord God. See, you can't get around that. Right, right. So, again, the gospel is for all nations. One more place, Revelation 7. And this is it. Revelation 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Revelation 7 and verse 1. Now, this is all the way in Revelation. Again, you're still going to see the significance of Israel. That don't change. But not only are you going to see the significance of Israel, you're going to see that he's still dealing with all nations. So you got both of them. You got to have an even, even balance. Revelation 7 and 1. Go ahead. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Mm -hmm. And I saw another angel extending from the east, having the sea, seal of the living God. Mm -hmm. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, mm -hmm. saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. See, God getting ready to pour out some plagues like he did in Moses' time, when Israel got ready to come out of Egypt, because he had to humble Pharaoh to bring him out. Well, he's going to have to humble the world to bring Israel back from slavery all over the world. He's going to do that. But he's not just going to deliver Israel. He didn't just deliver Israel out of Egypt, did he? Mm -hmm. he, he, he brought a mixed multitude out with him. Right. So, of course, it's going to be a mixed multitude now. We're living in a much greater and bigger world now. And Israel is scattered all over. So not only going to bring Israel from all over, he know where they at, he's going to bring other nationalities as well. So, so they don't get hurt by his plagues that he's about to pour out. He's going to seal them. That means he's going to make sure they covered where they don't get hurt. Like he was in Egypt. They were severed. In other words, he sent darkness on Pharaoh in Egypt. But the Bible says it was dark for three days all the land of Egypt. Except where Israel was, they, it was lit up. They had light. They could see clear. Pharaoh and them couldn't even leave their house. It was a darkness that could be felt. So they had a seal on them where they didn't get affected by God's play. Where the people are going to have a seal now. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the tree. There's going to be some damage done. 
till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Now, let's see who's getting sealed first. Go ahead. Verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Uh -huh. And there were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And you have a lot of people talking about 144,000. I heard of witnesses talking about the 144,000. They elders in heaven now. But I know, don't hear people telling you what it is. It's Israel, right? right. It said there were sealed 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So we can't do away with Israel, can we? And we're talking literal Israel, not some spiritualized Israel, because he's going to name individual tribes. That take it back to your origin, your original homeland, nationhood, and tribal unit. Go ahead, verse 5. Of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. See, of the tribe of Judah was sealed 12,000. He's going to seal exactly 12,000 from that tribe at this time. Go ahead. Of the tribe of Reuben was sealed 12,000. See, and we just read... The stranger, when Israel get the land, see, he got to save these Israelites so he can recoup and bring them back to the promised land, right? And they can inherit the promised land, right? But we saw when they inherit the promised land according to the tribe that the stranger going to get inheritance too, right? So it got to be some strangers saved too, right? I mean, that's only common sense. So the tribe of Judah, 12,000, tribe of Reuben, 12,000, what else? Of the tribe of Gads were sealed 12,000. See, and he keep on naming the tribes. He going to name 12. People say, well, why Dan ain't there? I don't know why Dan ain't there. He going to be in the land, though. For something, maybe he didn't need to get sealed. I don't know. That's something you ask the Lord. But it's still going to be 12 of them sealed right here. But now, skip down to verse 9, and we're going to wrap it up. Because after the 144,000, John going to tell you something else. Go ahead. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now, I can't believe I heard some Israelites saying this still not talking about other nations. Oh. This is still talking about just Israel among the other nations. I said, boy, you really drunk. You really got to be drunk. He named Israel. He separated Israel first, 12,000 from each tribe. So quite naturally, when he get down to the great multitude, it ain't like Israel in the land where you can say, well, these was in the promised land and the others were scattered out. Look, Israel is scattered out all over right now. So the 144,000 got to be ones that scattered out. God know what tribe you from. But then he said, after this, I beheld and lower a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So these are people from all different nations, speaking different languages, that believe the gospel because the gospel is for all nations. One more uh, verse, verse 10, what did they say? And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sit upon the throne, and unto, our, unto the Lamb. So these people from these other nations, they believe the gospel as well. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.